From Software really delivered with the release of The Ring City. It brought a satisfying conclusion to the Dark Souls 3 storyline, incorporated elements from the previous entries in the series, good bosses, new covenant to enjoy, and it heralded the return of scripted NPC invasions. Early in the DLC, we come across the ruins of the Earthen Peak, meet some demons, and then reach the titular Ring City, a place that shares more than a few similarities with Shulva from Dark Souls 2, such as a sunken holy city cut off from the world, protected by disembodied spirits eternally pledged to its defense, a dragon filled with corruption, his female associate, themes of sleep, spears, a goddess with some goofy looking eyes, and a bullshit swamp filled with lightning monsters. During my first playthrough, I was pretty much blind. The only outside info I had was that a character introduced in Dark Souls 2 shows up as an NPC invader. And given the information thus far, I was positive I had it figured out. Earth and Peak, Pyromancies, Shulva Sin Parallels, there's only one phantom that checks all three. Jester Thomas. That had to be it. We got Chaos Bed Vestiges, new Pyromancy Catalyst. I got real excited. I hunted for the invasion. And then, just up from the Purging Monument, the, the Spurned, Alva, Alva the Wayfarer. Alva the got his ass kicked down a cliff in Irithyll and completed my Maldron cosplay, Seeker of the Spurned. Oh, come on, I call bull. Welcome to the game table. I'm Fontus, and this is What's in a Name, the language of Dark Souls. Today we explore the Ring City and find out that the more things change, the more they stay the same. Like the DLC, we begin in the Dreg Heap, a churning mass converging at the base of Lothric. And that's where we'll start, defining the kingdom of princes, pillars, and pilgrims. Lorien, the Elder Prince, from Quenyan, Lorien, the Golden Dream or Golden Land, from Laurelin, the Golden Spirit Tree that would one day bear the sun. The Elder Prince is the hope of the future. He's the Knight Valiant, the sword of Lothric's prince. That brings us to Quenyin, Loth, Floralescent, which means the potential of blooming. And that is combined with two versions of the suffix Rick, the savior, the promised. And the other is from Ricky, which means the bent, broken. The kingdom was named for the hope it would be saved, but the reality is he was born broken. Put them together, and the conjoined soul of the Lothric princes, Lothlorien, the dream flower. While little Lothric was named to be a savior, he's twisted, making this dream flower a nightmare garden. Speaking of divine messages, Gertrude is from Sindarin, Gruthra, terrified of, and Sindarin, Ood, the pit. Gertrude, terrified of the pit. So while this heavenly daughter may be false, the pillar of priestess is a heart wrenching truth. Emma, it means mommy and it's probably how Prince Lothric refers to her, because she raised him, she clothed him, and she was his wet nurse. So if anyone was called mommy by little Lothric, it was Emma. And you killed her, just to die to the dancer for two hours before ultimately giving up and progressing normally to Vord. My dear Prince Lothric. He called her mommy. On a brighter note, let's talk about the abandoned army that was lost to the Abyss and became a grotesque caricature of human effigies. The Herald Legion, Quenyan, Har, to remain or severed, and Halda, the hidden or veiled in shadow. Then we have Lap, the amnesiac. You know what? Don't worry about it. You want definition? Okay, fine. Quenyan, don't concern yourself. Moving on. We have the ruins of the Earthen Peak, a place in Dark Souls 2 that contains Poison, pyromancers, and big hulking bastards associated with the dark. Not much has changed. No queen though. Mitha, the baneful queen. Quenyin, mid, drawn moisture, collected dew. Miha, pierced or deep inside, grow up. And finally, Mai or Mir, a pretty jewel or work of art. The second half of her name is derived from the etymological root Sa, rotten, poison, or gone bad, which gives us Mitha, the collector of poison the marred beauty, and corrupted by the deep. And moving on, we have Zoe, the last of the desert pyromancers, from Quenyin, Soile, Cleansing, and Yi, one who does. She has the power to cleanse the corruption. There is one more tangent in a Dark Souls 2 I would like to cover. Pharos the Vagabond, the creator of contraptions, lockstones, and that mask that continuously leaks water. 
But let's define his name first. Quenyin, fair, ethereal light, or phantom. And Quenyin, osa, wall, the wall of light, the phantom wall. Already, that sounds suspiciously like the barrier over the bridge of Irithel. I've mentioned before a great nation of men that fell to darkness. They had a day called Aldia, and a dark lord who gave out rings. The king during all of this was one Ar Farazan, or Pharos the king. He got totally corrupted because he walked right into Mordor and politely asked for a surrender. No one thought it was weird that this worked. By the time the ships got back, Sauron convinced them to worship the darkness and that the king should lead an attack on the Undying Lands. The reason that the Doors of Pharos ends with a big pile of rock because the gods dropped a literal mountain onto his army, crushed his ships, and cast his island kingdom to the bottom of the ocean. There are those who believe that Pharos later became the Witch King. I think that's dumb. With a fleet of broken ships and an army of buried soldiers, this king of a sunken throne would be lucky to find himself impaled on a pike, punished for his madness, let alone remembered fondly as a vagabond Mr. Wizard, helping the needy with glowing walls, deadly traps, and pools of literal tears. In his own language, Farazan meant the Golden, and was derived from Lorien. Speaking of Lorien, after vanquishing the remnants of the demon prince he defeated, we are treated to the remnants of Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls 1 and it is through here that we gain entrance to the Ring City. But what if this transition was supposed to be a bit more meaningful? In the first game, we had to ring two bells, one above, one below. And so far in Dark Souls 3, we rang one bell right before the Nameless King. What if I was to tell you that we found a second bell, and that bell was even named the Bell of Awakening? Eleonora, from Quenyan, El, a small bell, Lon, to ring, and Aura, to arise, awake, the small Bell of Awakening found in the lowest halls of the profane capital. Perhaps originally, it was meant to be rung at the ruins of Firelink, a way for those who lurk in the dark to hear Eleanor's feast bell and know it was finally time to let, let the, the feast, feast begin. begin. Finally, we arrive in the Ring City, where we are greeted by another familiar face from Dark Souls 2, Ruin Sentinels, created by these jerks, Judicator Giants. Their leader is named Argo, from Sindarin, Ar, the chief or leader, and Go, the fear or terror. They judicate their chief fears, protect against their greatest terrors. Thanks to the Lost Bastille, we have the names of three of the Ruin Sentinels, Alessia, from Sindarin, Aleph, release or free, and Thea, seemingly, or appear, seemingly free, appear released. Next we have Rike from Quenyin, Rikir, let them try. Let them try and try and try. Finally, Yahim from Quenyin, Ya, continuously, and Hima, resolute and steadfast. They are dependable. Now, despite the names coming from Dark Souls 2, they're pretty specific to the description given in Dark Souls 3, forced to fight a disembodied spirit. We do know, however, of a spirit that did not need to be forced, an eccentric who got along well with Havel the Rock, Silver Knight Leto, whose name comes from... Okay, hold on. See, this one's a bit tricky. This name means one who is let loose, freed from obligation, which gels quite nicely with what we know of him. But the word it derives from is a Quenyan pronunciation of a Sindarin name. And the Sindarin version is already a name introduced in Dark Souls 2. It comes from the Sindarin Lethian, released from service. That's right. Luthien, the gallant knight of Ferosa, who is also deeply associated with giants and rocks, he may not literally be Luthien, just owing his design to the cutting room floor. But you be the judge. Personally, this makes up for Jester Thomas, who, speaking of, I am still not sorry at all for what I said about Alva the Wayfarer, from Quenyan, Al, blessed or happy, and Quenyan, Va, having qualities of. So he's the blessed, the happy. Why is it always the optimists who are always the worst at their jobs? In this case, that includes not being seduced by Zuli the Witch, from Sindarin, Zu, the darkness or corruption, and Li, one of many, from one of the many corrupted. Now for a surprise connection between these Judicators and Zuli, the person who sells Zuli's equipment in Dark Souls 2, Royal Sorcerer Navlan. From Quenyin, Nav, to judge or put on trial, Law, beyond, over, and across, and An, for, then, or. He judges who goes beyond. He's the Royal Court Judicator. Now honestly, this gives us some insight into some of his more mysterious aspects. 
Being in her royal court, the eye coverings may be a symbolic reference to her slumber, but if he sought resurrection for the sleeping goddess, who would want to kill him? Well, my money is on the lady who walks around with a literal corpsicle. As for her name, she says it far better than I could. I've searched for thee, dark, stricken creature. I am Shira, daughter of the Duke, descendant of gods, and trusted friend to Medea. At once, I am the honor of the gods, the glory of fire, and the fear of the dark. Thou shalt not go unpunished for thy treachery, thy profanity, and thy shameless yearning. Now her dragon friend, Dark Eater Medir, from the Quenyan Me, inside, among, and Tyr, the guarded or watched, inside the watched, defending from within. If there was a bonfire right outside his boss room, you might call it outside or next to the watched or defended, which would be Nadir, the eternal sanctum, which is where we find Sin, the slumbering dragon, whose name can simply mean Sindarin, Sind, the Grey or Pale. And this is the root for Sindarin, the Grey Elf, the Forsaken. Watching over Sin is Elena, the Squalid Queen, with her wrathful battle axe. Now to me, this axe bears more than a passing resemblance to Shira's crucifix. Elena, Quenyan, Elena, Star Words. But in addition to being an idiom for looking up, Elena is the elvish name for an island that once was the greatest kingdom of men. They don't talk about it very much because that kingdom is gone and the island sank. Now I've defined both Filianor and a certain uncle in a previous video. Those definitions remain my thoughts on the etymology, but I'm not quite done. I wanted to bring up an elvish idiom. It's Shira Shara Sula, worry phrase the soul, which if Shira is worried, is she the fray in Medir's frayed blade? What about his old moonlight? Where'd that come from? Another look at Medir may clarify the D sound in particular. Along with T as in tear, we get a TH sound pronounced like the spice time or leto from earlier in this video. This makes Medir M-I-T-H-I-R, which is the root for mithril or true silver. That's not all. We also get a location, the old gray mist of the cold ring lake. In Quenyan, they called the same location along with all the elves from there, gray or Quenyan, Sind. And on the heels of that revelation, we've certainly come full circle. But as always, we're left with many more questions than answers. Who is the old moonlight that either dragon is named for? Well, we'll just have to keep looking. Join me next time when the topic will be gods and deities. I'm Fontis, this is The Game Table, and thank you for joining me. But before I go, I owe everyone an explanation on why this video took so long. Let me just say that when you want to find out if you are ready to have a kid, get a friend to randomly break into your house, destroy your most valued possession, crap their pants, and scream. When you wake up to see the screaming, stinky person in the ruins of your stuff, if your first instinct isn't to comfort them and wipe their ass, you're not ready for kids. And I'll leave it at that.